Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Ε, είμαστε εδώ για την ε, νέα διάλεξη ε, του κέντρου του ΚΕΜΕΣ ε, που όπως και όλες οι άλλες αυτού του καδημαϊκού έτους έχει ως ε, θέμα την ε, συνοδικότητα. Ε, Good afternoon to all and welcome to this um, online uh, lecture of um, of the SEMES, which this academic year is um, dedicated to the topic of synodality, which is uh, central to all uh, theological and ecumenical reflections. Uh, we are very happy and honored to have uh, this afternoon with uh, us Professor Father Iasan Destivel, a good friend and uh, of our center, who is an official of the Vatican Dicastery for promoting Christian unity and the director of the Angelicum Institute for Ecumenical Studies, which is an academic partner of, the, of our center and uh, with which in the past we have organized uh, different activities, academic activities. Um, Είμαστε χαρούμενοι που έχουμε απόψε μαζί μας τον πατέρα Ιάκεθο Ντεστιβέλ που είναι Δομινικανός, εργάζεται στην Καθολική Επιτροπή για την Πρόθεση της Εξωτερικής Ενότητας και είναι διευθυντής του Οικουμενικού Ινστιτούτου του α, Πανεπιστημίου του Θωμάτου Ακινάτη Ατζέλικου με το οποίο το κέντρο μας, το ΚΕΜΕΣ, έχει μια πολύ καλή συνεργασία τα τελευταία χρόνια. Ε, η διάλεξη θα είναι στα αγγλικά, θα γίνει η χρήση PowerPoint αμέσως μετά τη διάλεξη ή το αργότερο το αύριο το πρωί ε, θα αναρτηθεί κείμενο στα ελληνικά της, της διάλεξης μέσα από τα κανάλια του κέντρου. So, Father Destivel, welcome. Welcome. Uh, And uh, thank you very much for being with us. You know, the topic of synodality has been at the center of the Orthodox Catholic dialogue. We had the honor to have with us in December His Eminence, Bishop of Pisi, the Ajob, who spoke about how the issue of synodality was studied in the context of the theological Orthodox Catholic dialogue. And we also uh, have had so far reflections from different contexts And we are looking uh, very much forward to continue our reflection on this very crucial ecclesiological, ecumenical um, topic that has to do also with, uh, with our faith, with our life, with how we implement our faith in our daily life as members of, of the church. So, uh, Professor Destivel, uh, Father Yes, and the virtual floor is yours. Good evening, Perispera. Thank you, dear uh, Dimitrios, Professor Keramidas, for your introduction. Uh, I'm delighted to speak tonight uh, for the, all the friends of the KMS. As you said, Dimitrios, we have a, a partnership between uh, the KMS and the Institute for Ecumenical Studies of the Angelicum. And uh, synodality is an important aspect of our uh, Uh, partnership of our reflection and I would like to thank you for your invitation tonight to, to speak about the uh, first session of the General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops. It was the 16th uh, General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops but this uh, assembly has the particularity to have two sessions so I participate in the first session as an expert Uh, expert theologian uh, among 26 other experts uh, last October, and uh, I will also participate in the second session in uh, October 2024. So uh, I would like to, to describe briefly uh, all the, this process and uh, uh, show uh, why it is an unprecedented uh, Uh, event in the history of the Catholic Church uh, for three reasons, and I will share my screen. So, 
So, uh, in October 2023, the first session of the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops was held in the Vatican on the theme for a synodal church communion, participation, and mission. This assembly uh, is unprecedented in the history of the Catholic Church for three main reasons its process, its composition, and its methodology. First, uh, because the Synod uh, was conceived as a process and not just an event. As you can see here, uh, this process was quite uh, complex. It was a three-year process, which began in 2021 with consultations at the local, that is diocesan, uh, national and continental levels. You can here also see the description of this process in another uh, schema. Uh, this, so this 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 process started, as I said, at the local level, not not only the local the, the the diocesan level, but the level of the parishes and communities. And uh, after all dioceses were invited to have a synodal process. Uh, for example, here you have the uh, synodal process of the Archdiocese of Washington uh, in 2021-2022. And after uh, all bishops' conferences, uh, so at national level, usually were invited also to have on the basis of the uh, diocesan reports uh, their own uh, synodal assembly. So, for example, you have here for India uh, the synthesis of all the Indian Catholic dioceses. Uh, dioceses. So you have 132 dioceses in India, uh, Latin diocese, I mean. So uh, there was also a synthesis made at this national level. And finally, uh, at the continental level also, there were continental assemblies. For example, here you have the continental assembly in Africa on the basis of the uh, national um, synthesis made by the con Episcopal conferences, the bishops' conferences. There were continental assemblies. There are seven continental assemblies for North and South America, uh, Europe, uh, Middle East, Africa, um, Oceania and Asia. And this whole, uh, so the, the, this whole uh, uh, process was based on a preparatory document, which was uh, a kind of questionnaire addressed to uh, all uh, members of the people of God. And this whole process uh, has led to the drafting of an uh, uh, Instrumentum Laboris, you can see here this Instrumentum Laboris, the first, the cover, which was the working document of the General Assembly. And uh, as I said at the beginning, this uh, assembly was divided into two uh, sessions. So the first session of the Synod opened the universal phase, uh, and this universal phase will conclude in next October, in, the, in October 2024, uh, with the second session. It is, uh, first of all, interesting to see that in this process, the ecumenical dimension was essential. Um, fraternal delegates from the various Christian traditions were invited at each uh, level of consultation. So also at the diocesan, uh, national and continental level, there, were, there was even a specific letter addressed by both Cardinal Greg, who is the General Secretary of the Synod, and uh, Cardinal Koch, who is the Prefect of the Dicastery for uh, Promoting Christian Unity, addressed to all uh, bishops' conferences to invite them to uh, include also uh, delegates, observers from the other Christian traditions in the synodal process. Uh, it should be noted that the, the assembly was preceded also by an ecumenical prior vigil called Together 
gathering of the people of God. Uh, you have here a picture of this uh, prayer. Uh, it was uh, 30 September 2023 in St. Peter's Square in the presence of Pope Francis. 12 heads of churches and leaders of Christian world communions, including uh, Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew and Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, uh, including also the fraternal delegates of the Synod and uh, representatives of local Christian communities. But also uh, we are present the members of the College of Cardinals, the members of the Synod of Bishops, and more than 18,000 faithful. And it was the first time in history, the first time in history uh, that an ecumenical prayer was organized uh, to entrust the work of a Catholic synod to the Holy Spirit. The vigil was uh, jointly organized by the Teze community, uh, the Dicastery for Promoting Christian Unity and the General Secretariat of the Synod. And uh, it was the high point of a weekend attended by thousands of young people from different Christian traditions and more than 40 countries. And it can be said that this vigil set an ecumenical tone for the whole synod. So uh, unprecedented because of uh, the process. But uh, the session of the Synod of Bishops was also unprecedented in terms of its composition. Uh, you have here a, a description of the composition of the Synod. So there were 365 members with voting rights, 70% uh, of them bishops, with each Episcopal conference electing its representative, one representative for every 25 bishops. But also, and it was uh, 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 something totally new, also 70 non-bishops proposed by the Continental Assemblies. And among the 70 non-bishops, there were 45 lay people and 54 women, religious or lay people with voting rights. Here you have, so perhaps more clearly, the uh, composition of the synod. And uh, in addition to the members of with voting rights, uh, so as I said, including 70 non-bishops, uh, there were also other categories of, of participants in the Synod without voting rights, uh, special guests, uh, facil 35 facilitators responsible for moderating the Cielco de Minori, I will explain what it was, the small groups, working groups, and 26 expert theologians, and also fraternal delegates. Uh, as a whole, uh, the Synod gathered 164 participants. Uh, for example, among the special guests were uh, Fra Alois, the prior, the former prior superior of the community of Thésée, or the theologian Hervé Legrand, and, um, and other people. Uh, Speaking of memberships, it is also special, particularly important, inter interesting for us to mention the presence of the fraternal delegates. For there, there are always fraternal delegates at the synod, but for this uh, synodal assembly, in order to ensure a broader representation, delegates from the four major Christian traditions were invited, three from the Orthodox Church, three from the Oriental Orthodox Churches, three from the mainline Protestant communions, and three from the free churches. So uh, from the Orthodox Church, you had a representative from the Ecumenical Patriarchate. It was Metropolitan uh, Job, Getcha of Pisidia. Uh, uh, from the Serbian Orthodox Church, uh, Bishop Nectari, and from the Romanian Orthodox Church, Metropolitan Yosef. And you had also uh, from the Oriental Orthodox Churches, 
uh, representative from the Coptic Orthodox Church, from the Armenian Apostolic Church, Sea of Hitchimelzin, and from the Malankara Orthodox Syrian Church. From the Protestant communions, you had uh, fraternal delegates from the Anglican Communion, the Methodist, World Methodist Council, and the World Communion of Reformed Churches, and from the Evangelical Pentecostals, from the Baptist Alliance, from the World Pentecostal Fellowship, and from the Disciples of Christ. And it was the first time that we invited, uh, that the Synod invited also representatives uh, in such a uh, way of the evangelical Pentecostals um, communions. Um, in keeping with the, the tradition of the Synod, it should be noted that the fraternal delegates are not just observers, they are not just observers like in Vatican II, for example, but they are invited to take part in the discussion and in the discussion, not only in the small groups or Chicoli Minori, but also in the plenary uh, assembly. Um, and they can even propose amendments to the final report. So uh, the, the role of the fraternal delegates is, 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 is very important. The only difference with the members of the Synod is that the fraternal delegates do not vote. You have here a picture of the fraternal delegates with Pope Francis and Cardinal Koch. So now, uh, I spoke about the process, about the composition of the Synod, and I would like now to speak about the methodology, which was also unprecedented. Uh, the assembly, you have here the description uh, of this uh, methodology. The assembly uh, uh, began its work with a three-day spiritual retreat, which was also totally new and was uh, 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 divided into uh, 35 small groups called also Cercoli Minori of 12 people. Uh, okay, you have here a picture uh, of this uh, to, give, to have an idea of, of how it looked. Uh, so you had 35, um, 35 uh, five, uh, groups uh, of 12 people. And uh, after the, the introductions in the plenary assembly, which were called this plenary assembly, the, the general congregation. So after the introductions on one of, on, on each of the 15 themes of the Instrumentum Laboris, you had 15 chapters of the Instrumentum Laboris. The discussion took place mainly in these circoli minori or in these small groups who exchange ideas using uh, the, a, a, method, a, a methodology co called the conversation in the spirit. Conversation in the spirit. Here you have also the, the, the table of the presidency, also which was very particular. It was almost like a small group with the Pope presiding over, uh, but at the same levels and the other and the the the. Um, the General Secretary of the Synod and, and uh, Cardinal Greg. And uh, so the conversation in the spirit uh, method is the following. Each member is invited to speak in turn, first to share his or her talks and then to incorporate the talks of others. And finally, a common position is adopted by each group noting the points of agreement, the points to be explored in greater depth, and the proposal. So three kinds of, uh, 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 of, of fruits, let us say, of this uh, conversation in the spirit. Points of agreements, points to be explored, and proposals. And at the plenary session, the results of these discussions were shared. shared. And the, the last week, finally, uh, a synthesis report was drafted, uh, summarizing these discussions and was adopted by the Synod. This report, entitled A Synodal Church in Mission, is 40 pages, 40 pages long and comprises 20 chapters divided into three parts. So you have here the 20 uh, chapters. 
Um, the first part entitled The Face of the Synodal Church includes chapters on understanding synodality, synodal methodology, the sacraments of Christian initiation and synodality, the service of the poor, cultural diversity, the Eastern Catholic Churches, and Christian unity. The second chapter, entitled All Disciples, All Missionaries, includes chapters on the meaning of mission, the role of women, consecrated life, deacons and priests, bishops, and the Bishop of Rome. And the third uh, chapter, the third, the, the third part, sorry, uh, entitled uh, Weaving Bonds Building Communities, dealt with formation, uh, open questions, uh, the ministry of listening, mission in the digital world, participation bodies, church groupings, and the synod of bishops. And uh, interestingly, on each of these points, uh, on these 20 points, yes, uh, the synthesis report notes the convergences of the assembly, the matters for consideration, and some proposals. So the same methodology as it was made in the Cilcori Minori. So three, three kinds of, of fruits, three kinds of uh, 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 reflection on the convergences, uh, matters for considerations, and proposals. Uh, of course, it is not possible for me to comment on each of the chapters, so I will content myself with uh, presenting the chapter on ecumenism, which was, as it is uh, here indicated, chapter seven of the report. And this chapter seven was entitled On the Road to Christian Unity. Like each chapter, uh, chapter seven distinguishes between convergences, issues to be addressed, and proposals. Let us see the convergences. The convergences, uh, are the following, the assembly in the light of the together vigil uh, prayer uh, first recognizes that we are in an ecumenical chaos. Uh, this is, of course, a summary what I, have, I am presenting now. <clears throat> uh, first, convergence, is, convergence, we are in a, an ecumenical chaos. Uh, it then reaffirmed that baptism, which is at the root of the principle of synodality, also constitutes the foundation of ecumenism. Through it, all Christians participate in the census fidei, and for this reason, they should be listened to carefully, since there can be no synodality without an ecumenical dimension. This was the second convergence. And uh, let us uh, remind that each of these proposals were voted, yes, and should be adopted by the Synodal Assembly by two thirds at least of the voting uh, members of the Synod. Uh, the third convergence was uh, the question of the importance of the spiritual roots of ecumenism, which is realized in daily life, and the importance of theological dialogue. And uh, the fourth convergence was the, regarding the ecumenism of blood and an expression of Pope Francis, since unity comes from the cross of the Lord. And finally, uh, it, the, chap the chapter mentioned the needs for, to, for all Christians to work together to meet the pastoral challenges of our time and the importance of interchurch marriages. So these were the convergences noted by the assembly regarding ecumenical issues. Among the four matters for considerations, the assembly first uh, uh, noted the uh, diverse way uh, different Christian traditions understand the synodal configuration of the church. Uh, the report notes in particular that in Orthodox churches, synodality is understood in a strict sense as an expression of the collegial exercise of authority proper to the bishop alone, the Holy Synod, but broadly it refers to the active participation of all the faithful in the life and the mission of the church. So a strict definition, 
based on the Episcopal ordination, but uh, uh, a broader understanding based on the baptism. Uh, the assembly also uh, um, uh, called for a reflection on the link between synodality and primacy at the various levels, local, regional, and universal, and their mutual interdependence. So it is a topic, of course, which is at the core of the current dialogue between the Catholic and Church and the Orthodox Church. On the question of Eucharistic hospitality, communicatio in sacris, in the light of the link between sacramental and ecclesial communion, and on the phenomenon on non-confessional communities and revival movements, uh, that is uh, the uh, mainly the, the the challenge raised by the. Uh, um, uh, emergence and uh, development of some uh, uh, some evangelical uh, Pentecostal uh, movements in some countries. And uh, finally, five proposals were made by the uh, Commission. Uh, first, a common commemoration of the 1700th anniversary of the Council of Nicaea. Second, a common date for the Feast of Easter. Um, third, the invitation of a greater number of fraternal delegates to the next session of the Assembly in 2024. We will see what, what happens. <laughs> uh, the convocation of an ecumenical synod on common mission in the contemporary world. And finally, the compilation of an ecumenical martyrology. I should note that uh, also in the uh, context of the preparation of the uh, Jubilee of 2025 and also of the preparation of the Jubilee of the Council of Nicaea, Pope Francis established a commission on the new martyrs. And uh, for those who live in Rome, next last week we commemorated in the Catholic Church uh, for the first time the 21 Coptic martyrs of Libya. Uh, which were canonized by the Coptic Church in 2015 and inserted in the Roman Martyrology in 2023 by Pope Francis. <clears throat> so these are the main points of the uh, ecumenical chapter of the Synthesis Report. But apart from Chapter 7, uh, other passages of the Summary Report mention the ecumenical dimension uh, of the Synod. Uh, first, the introduction itself of the uh, report refers to the ecumenical prior vigil together described as a grace, as you can see here. Um, uh, second, the chapter six also uh, entitled uh, Tradition of the Eastern Churches and the Latin Church considers that uh, it is necessary to reflect on the contribution that the Eastern Catholic Churches can make to, to the journey towards unity of all Christians and all, on the role they can play in interreligious and intercultural dialogue. And finally, in chapter 13, also interesting, chapter entitled The Bishop of Rome in the College of Bishops, the assembly notes that I quote, the promotion of the unity of all Christians is an essential aspect of the ministry of the Bishop of Rome. And the uh, report also affirms that the response to the invitation made by Pope Jean Paul II in the encyclical Utonum Sint, as well as the conclusions of the ecumenical dialogues, can help the Catholic understanding of primacy, collegiality, synodality, and their reciprocal relations. So, the synthesis report uh, includes ecumenical aspects also in, in, in not only in the chapter seven, but also as we have seen in other chapters, in, in particular chapter six and 13. In addition to the synthesis report, and I will conclude by this, uh, the assembly also published a letter to the people of God, uh, which refers to the presence of delegates from other churches and ecclesial communities, stating that their participation deeply 
uh, pres uh, enrich the debate. And the letter also uh, refers to the ecumenical prayer vigil uh, that preceded uh, the synod. As you can see here, during the op opening ecumenical vigil, we experience how the thirst for unity increases in the silent contemplation of the crucified Christ. So uh, we can uh, note uh, that the ecumenical dimension uh, was not at all marginal in the ecumenic, in the synodal process and in the synodal assembly of uh, 2023, but uh, gave, we can see, the whole tone of the whole synod. Uh, now, the next session of the synod will take place next October uh, from 2nd to 27th of October 2024. It was uh, recently, it was uh, actually uh, uh, um, communicated only three days ago. And this uh, second session of the 16th General Assembly of the uh, Synod of Bishops will be also preceded by a two-day uh, spiritual retreat. In the meantime, all dioceses are asked to consult the people of God on the synthesis report and to send a reaction to the Episcopal Conference. And the Episcopal Conferences, so there are, as, a, as a whole, there are 115 in the world, 115 Episcopal Conferences, very, very diverse between themselves, because some are huge, like, I don't know, the, 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 from Brazil or from, so much, or from Italy, of course, there are even uh, more uh, differences. Um, uh, not only one Episcopal Conference in Italy, there are regional, but uh, uh, so the, the, the size of the Episcopal Conferences is very diverse. But uh, so each of these Episcopal Conferences is invited also to send uh, a, a report, a synthesis of the diocesan uh, report, a synthesis of no more than eight pages to the Secretariat of the Synod by May 15. So they have uh, three more months to uh, draft this synthesis uh, at national level. And a new instrumentum laboris will be drawn on, uh, will be drawn up on the basis of these reports. So a new instrumentum laboris will be draft and we will be the uh, working document for the next uh, session. It has uh, already been made clear uh, in the chirograph signed uh, by Pope Francis on February 17, so it was exactly four days ago, that there will be two types of subjects in the next session of the Synod. Some uh, subjects will be submitted to the Synodal Assembly for discussion and other uh, will be studied by special commissions set up by the Synod Secretariat and the various curial dicasteries. So, as you can see here, there will be a, a list of, of these uh, topics will be submitted to uh, Pope Francis, and uh, so there will be two types of, of subject. So, as you can see, it's a very long process. I would say it's an historical process, unprecedented process, uh, as I said, by uh, its, uh, uh, the process itself, by the composition and by the methodology. Never in the history of the Catholic Church there was such a process of consultation, uh, including the whole people of God. And probably uh, uh, in this long process, perhaps the movement is perhaps more important than the content itself, because, of course, the Synod will not resolve all the issues which were addressed, which were raised during the, the process. So this process, I would say, requires the, the prayer of all and the help of the Holy Spirit uh, to teach uh, the way we must go and how we are to pursue it as it is uh, requested in this uh, prayer. And let me uh, read to conclude the, this prayer for the Synod. It is called the Atsumus prayer, based on a very ancient prayer used in the Catholic Church for the councils of the Synod. I will just read it. 
We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name. With you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not, do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partially influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Yes, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Destivel, for your very clear synthesis of the synthesis of your synodal process of the first session of the Synod of the Catholic Bishops on Synodality. So I think you present you presented us uh, the spiritual ecclesial uh, context of this synodal process. Um, you emphasized uh, the idea that it is not an event but a process in which the whole Catholic Church participates. Uh, the Orthodox Church has also experienced uh, somehow a, a long process of preparing a synod. The Holy Great Council was prepared for over 60 years. So uh, 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 it is important also not the synod itself, but the, the process that allows also for the consensus, the census fidei to participate in the overall uh, synodal reflection. Uh, so you also emphasize the ecumenical dimension of the synod, the participation of uh, ecumenical fraternal delegates, as they were called, from different churches and uh, confessions from the East and the West. You, the, the Catholic Church, have indeed a long tradition of uh, of non-Catholics participating uh, actively in synodal process, starting from the Vatican, uh, uh, the Second Vatican Council, um, uh, and of course, what was very interesting to learn was the fact that it is not, it was not uh, a synod of bishops, but a synod of the whole church. Technically, is a synod of bishops, but. Uh, according to what you you said, it was a synod where also non bishops participated, lady clergy, uh, women, uh, monastics, uh, and so on. So um, I think there is a, a growing, but at the same time sincere, uh, synodal uh, awareness. In the Catholic Church, and uh, and I find crucial this uh, this element because often uh, the churches uh, have their own decision taking or decision making processes without taking into account what will be the effects of their deliberations, the communical effects of their deliberation. Uh, you mentioned the papal encyclical Utunum Sint from uh, John Paul II. It was an encyclical uh, published in 1995, and uh, uh, which had a very positive echo beyond the Catholic Church, contrary perhaps to other Vatican documents that were uh, received by somehow by by criticism. So the the the, the important in the way in which uh, a church understands herself, her relation with the world is also to ha to have this ecumenical awareness. They need also to take decisions without forgetting the task towards uh, Christian unity, Christian collaboration. Another aspect, in my view, that is crucial is um, uh, that the synod, if I understood correctly, reflected also on the role of the Bishop of Rome in the government of the Church, in the guiding of the Catholic Church. Perhaps we can uh, uh, talk about that. Um, 
in the second part of this of this of this lecture. Uh, you mentioned also that among the proposals of the synod was the common date for the feast of Easter, uh, and twenty twenty five can be perhaps an opportunity, Kairos indeed, to proceed to that. I remember when a delegation from the CMS uh, visited His Holiness Pope Francis in October 22, he spoke about the need to decide uh, together with the Ecumenical Patriarchate, with the Ecumenical Patriarchate, to find a day to celebrate together Easter. Um, as I said before, it was important also the spiritual context of the synod, the prayer, the ecumenical uh, prayer, and uh, the retreat, and also the concluding prayer. So it is indeed very important that a synod lets itself to be guided by by the spirit, to listen to, to the spirit. Uh, before I give the floor to uh, some uh, colleagues who are with, uh, with us, I have a couple of questions, if I may. Uh, the first is the question of uh, yes of the um, you mentioned that among the matters for consideration is that of the Eucharist the so-called Eucharistic hospitality communication sacris and the sacramental or ecclesial and ecclesial communion. Can you please give us some? more details about what has been discussed around this topic is sacramental com or ecclesial communion larger than eucharistic hospitality uh, is eucharistic hospitality still larger broader than sacramental communion what is the point of view in the catholic church on that yes no, the, this is an important ecumenical question indeed. Uh, the link between the ecclesial communion and the Eucharistic communion uh, in the Catholic classical understanding, the Eucharistic communion is the expression of the ecclesial communion. Uh, so there is no Eucharistic communion uh, without ecclesial communion. And this ecclesial communion is based itself on uh, in the communion in faith, in ministry, and in sacraments. So we first need to have a unity in faith, uh, in 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 the, in the ministry and in the sacraments, uh, which also in the Catholic understanding reflects the what we call the tria munera, the three functions of of Christ. Yes, as 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 prophet, as a, a king, and as a priest. Uh, so uh, uh, the question. So this is the framework and the context. But uh, the, the 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 precise question was raised mainly uh, because of the situation of uh, interchurch marriages, interchurch families, uh, where uh, married couples cannot. Uh, uh, receive the Eucharistic communion in the same church. Yes, uh, uh, strictly speaking, if we uh, apply this 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 uh, uh, classical link between the, there are some exceptions, of course, and uh, we, we, which are allowed by the canon law, uh, especially with the regarding the Oriental uh, and, and and Eastern uh, Orthodox. Uh, there are even agreements uh, in with some Oriental Orthodox churches regarding Eucharistic uh, sharing in some cases, uh, in some circumstances. But uh, uh, some, so the General Assembly of the Synod considered that it was uh, timely to reflect perhaps more uh, from a pastoral point of view, I think. It should be clearly understood that this, all this reflection is, is pastoral. Yes, it's not a it's not a dogmatic, uh, it's not a council where theologians will discuss uh, such uh, the, the, the dogmatic issues. It is, first of all, a pastoral assembly, I would say. So all these matters are uh, considered from a pastoral point of view. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, but it will not, as I mentioned, this, this, uh, 
this topic will not be discussed by the Synod, uh, well, as far as I uh, understand. So it will be probably because it is a technical, uh, a te a quite a technical uh, uh, discussion. So including well, not only ecclesiological, but also canonical and sacramental uh, uh, knowledge. So it will be discussed in the framework of a commission uh, between uh, the general secretary of the bishop and uh, probably the diacastery for promoting Christian unity. It will not be a discussion uh, of the, uh, it will not be at the agenda probably of, uh, of, the, of the next session of the Synod of Bishops. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, actually, that was the 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 idea of the, the yes of the Holy Great Council of the Orthodox Church not to discuss about dogma issues, but to discuss about to address theological issues that have a pastoral significance. And uh, yes, you mentioned also the the question of uh, of uh, yes of inter. Uh, inter-Christian, inter-ecclesial uh, marriages, which is among the issues also that the Holy and Greek Council discussed in 2016. And quite recently, there have been discussions in the Orthodox Church of Greece about the sacrament of marriage, the significance of the sacrament of uh, of marriage and the impediments to, to marriage. So thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, my, yes, my other question is perhaps a more practical one. Uh, what will be the next steps you said that there are two typologies of uh, of themes that will be dis discussed but do you have or will you be going to have an agenda of specific themes that will be discussed in the 2024 session uh, uh or this will be defined from now to a talk by, by the Holy See and the Synodal process at the world high level, at the level of episcopal conferences uh, uh, around the world. So are there some top questions or uh, topics that will be addressed? Yes. First of all, yes, as I say very often, Pope Francis, the, 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 the true uh, leader of the, of the Synod is the Holy Spirit. So we don't know really uh, what will be on the agenda. Uh, it will be decided by 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 the assembly itself. Uh, but what is is clear that uh, it should uh, so it will be based. So the now the synthesis report has been sent to all dioceses. So there will be reflection on the local level, reactions at the diocesan level, report at the national level. These eight pages reports will be sent to the Secretary of the Synod by the 15th of May 2024. And on the basis of these uh, reports, so sent by all the bishops' conference, so the 115 bishops' conference, and also the Synod of uh, bishops of the Oriental Catholic Churches. So there will be a, a new, a new. Um, Instrumentum laboris will be drafted. A new working document will be drafted, and uh, but uh, it will be. Um, no, but not not all topics uh, of this uh, instrumentum laboris will be uh, discussed in depth by uh, by the assembly. It's not possible in one month to. You have seen the twenty chapters. The, the, it, it is all the pastoral life of the Catholic Church. So. Only some of them will be discussed within the assembly. Other will be uh, uh, requires a, a, a more uh, a longer study, uh, in depth study in in the in the context of of the commissions in the Roman Curia, in collaboration with also of course the, uh, the 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 local episcopal conferences. But so yes, as you have uh, rightly understood, there will be two kinds of of topics, two kinds of subjects. Some will be submitted to the Synodal Assembly for discussion, and others will be studied uh, by special commissions set up by the Synod Secretariat and the, the various uh, dicasteries of the Roman Curia. And there will be a report also at the General Assembly, but it will not be discussed. Yes, but it is 
as I said, it's not possible in one month to uh, even it's less than one month to discuss all these topics. So the the the, the methodology is 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 this uh, the methodology to uh, to concentrate on some topics. But so far, we don't know what will be the, what will be the topics of the at, uh, it 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 yes of, of the of the the next session of the of the uh, of the assembly. Okay. Yes, thank you. So I can give now the floor to Professor Bayraktaris, uh, who is with us for his perhaps comments, reflections, or questions, and I will be uh, back uh, later. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Keramidas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear uh, my dear Professor uh, Father Destivel. It was. Uh, an inspiring and very informative uh, uh, presentation that we had uh, the chance and the opportunity to participate. And uh, personally, I would like to thank you for for, for this. Uh, for this, uh, I have a couple of comments and also one or two questions. Uh, firstly, um, I kept some some notes during your presentation, and. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I think that I realized uh, some kind of a shift from the Christological understanding of the Church to the spiritual understanding of the Church and the way that the Church uh, lives and uh, doing its mission in the life. And uh, it's very much of uh, great importance, the fact that the synod and the synodality has been understood not as an event, not as something static, but as a, a spiritual and pneumatological process, which means journey. And in this journey, uh, I think it's a gift of the current Pope of Rome, invited all Christian churches and communities, representatives of the Christian churches and communities. Because of this, uh, that he um, understood the, the, the synodality, let's say, uh, as a journey. In 2015, if I'm not wrong, during the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the institution of the Synod of Bishops, the 17th of October, he had stated that synodality is a new model of the church. And I think that uh, this, um, uh, this uh, um, let's say, this uh, um, um, great event on, on uh, synodality must be regarded as the magnus opus of Pope Francis. Um, he also proposed the, some kind of rejuvenation of the church in line with Pope uh, John XXIII, the Giornamento, and Paul the, the Sixth Apostolic Exhortation Evangelii Nutianti. So I think he continues in this same line. And uh, another. Uh, thing that I would like to mention is that he he, the, he stated in the in his apostolic exhortation of angelic uh, caudium in 2013 I, I quote I quote a synodal church must realize that listening is more than simply hearing uh, this affected me very much and uh, also the fact that he uh, wanted to to engage in this process, in this journey, not only bishops, but also laymen, is of great also importance because he realizes the church as something wider. It's not only a, a group for specialists, let's say, but it is the body of Christ, where everybody who is baptized has his own talent and is called to come forward and present it and share it with others. And uh, 
and this was also something which was uh, mentioned during the Vatican II. I will take you some years <laughs> back now. Uh, Cardinal Suenes maintained that the charism should be brought to their proper place in the church, especially charisms, charisms of laymen and women, who we might say are in a way called by the Lord and endowed with various charisms of the Spirit. So, uh, uh, these uh, is, is these facts, let's say, these uh, statements are of great uh, importance. Also, if I'm not wrong, some, somewhere, but I do not, I cannot recall where, I read that the, that the church should be regarded as the field hospital. These are words of uh, Pope uh, Francis, as a field hospital which is always on the move. And this proves, this sh shows actually the, 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 this spiritual dimension that he desires actually to, to, to give to, to the church and to the body of, of uh, Christ. So uh, the question is how the other Christian churches will be responding to this call coming from Rome, and uh, positively or negatively, of course, we do not know it. Uh, so, and uh, I would like just to, to make a couple of questions. What problems do you realize, do you think, do you reckon on the process of synodality? What kind of problems uh, do you see in the process of synodality? And also, I would like to ask you uh, if you, if we can say, if you realize some kind of a tension between the two different schools existing within the theological thought of the, the Roman Catholic Church, between the Concilium School and the Communion School, and I think in a sense it is related to the previous question uh, that uh, Professor Keramidas um had just a few moments ago. So um, these are my first comments and my my uh, questions. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Professor uh, Berakdaris, for this, uh, this 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 comments and these questions. Uh, perhaps uh, one one thought uh, I had uh, listening to you. Uh, I think all this process is based on the rediscovery of the baptismal charism uh, at Vatican II, and especially of the sensus fidei, what I think the Greek tradition called the ecclesiastic synesthesis. I'm sorry for my pronunciation, but it was also in the Ravenna document. Uh, this broad conception of synodality, not just based on the uh, uh, ordination of the, the, the Episcopal uh, ordination, on, but all, more broadly on the uh, articulation of all charisms uh, in the church based on the baptism. And I think, and it will be perhaps my second idea here, uh, this, this synodal process in the Catholic Church is somehow also the fruit of the ecumenical movement because we have received a lot, uh, especially from the Orthodox tradition, theology, and practice, we have received a lot from, 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 the, from the other Christians, and especially from the Orthodox Church, uh, this understanding of, of synodality. I know that there are many understanding, yes, but this, this idea that, uh, uh, the, that the that the church is built on this ecclesiastic synesthesis and also all the reflections in the 20th century on the, the, the Russian concept of Sabornos, also including the whole people of God. Uh, and uh, finally, the theological dialogue between the Catholic Church and the, and the Orthodox Church in, in the, with the Ravenna document, the Chieti document, the Alexandria document, all these documents also played and, and, and these documents uh, agreed upon uh, a, a very broad understanding of synodality, yes, based, as I said, not only uh, based uh, not only on the ordination, but more broadly uh, on 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 the baptism and expressed in the Eucharist. So a sacramental 
a sacramental understanding of the church and a sacramental understanding of synodality based on three sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, and of course also uh, order, yes, the Episcopal uh, ordination. So uh, I think uh, this, um, all this was, was the fruit of the ecumenical movement. So it is important also to acknowledge this. And uh, uh, you, you mentioned the, the problems <laughs> which can be now uh, uh, occur in, in, in this process. I think the first, the, the, one of the most important problems is the understanding itself of synodality. What do we understand? Yes, uh, there is no one understanding of synodality. Should un synodality include, uh, uh, as it is now done, also lay people? Should the lay people also have the right of uh, vote? Uh, should synodality, in the Catholic tradition, the, the very often it is said that the Catholic synodality is only a consultative one, while the Orthodox synodality is a deliberative one. Yes, but actually it's a bit a caricature. It's not exactly like this, because we have also uh, deliberative synodality in the Catholic Church. But uh, uh, I think it will be the main the, the, the main issue in, in the next few years, probably to to uh, to agree on the concept of synodality. Uh, you mentioned also the, the question of, of uh, the, the, the speech of Pope Francis for the anniversary of the institution of the Synod of Bishops. And it is interesting because the Synod of Bishops was in instituted not by Vatican II, not by the Council, but by Pope Paul VI. So it was the fruit of the primacy. And it is... Uh, uh, Pope Paul VI wanted to institute uh, that the, 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 the Vatican II con be continued uh, in, in a collegial way uh, by the Synod of Bishops. So we have the three dimensions of synodality, I would say, the, the, the primacy, the collegiality, what we call in the Catholic tradition collegiality, which is in fact the Episcopal collegiality, and, uh, and the co communitarian or the communal aspect based on, on, on the baptism. But I would say, uh, personally, it's a bit my, 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 my personal conviction that synodality is distinct from, of course, from the collegiality, but is also distinct from the communitarian or, or congregational or communal aspect. Synodality is the whole, is the articulation of the charism of the one, the all, and the some. Uh, so uh so it is uh it is not it is not the, not at all the democracy in the church it is the art and, and we can see that when there is a good synodality requires a good primacy you have no pri no synodality without primacy and it is also a fruit of the uh catholic orthodox dialogue yes this idea that uh Synodality and primacy are interdependent and mutually constitutive at all levels of the church. So you have no good, no, no real synodality and fruitful synodality without, uh, without uh, uh, healthy primacy. I think it is also an important aspect, an aspect we also have uh, uh, learned from the dialogue between Catholic and Orthodox. Yes. So, uh, thank you uh, for that fact. It is a, uh, it is uh, one of uh, um, the ideas of organizing uh, this set of uh, online lectures or synodalities uh, was to re-explore once again an authentic or genuine sense of uh, synodality uh, in light of uh, recent theological developments uh, as well as in light of ecumenical dialogue. So, to rediscover synodality means, among other things, also to rediscover also an authentically ecclesial exercise of pre pre primacy and uh, vice versa. And of course, the idea of uh, census fidei, which derives from our common baptisms, is very much important also for the Orthodox who uh, emphasize, especially on the Eucharistic aspect of synodality, as an uh, synodality is an extension of the Eucharist where the special function of the 
Episcopal ministry is is important, whereas baptism uh, uh, opens, so to speak, uh, uh, the synodal doors also to all the the people of the people of God, to all or to all faithful. So I think we should uh, uh, rediscover this interconnection between uh, baptism and synodality uh, and the Eucharist in light of uh, a real understanding of, uh, of synodality, an ecclesial understanding of synodality. Uh, I don't know if a uh, colleague uh, from Greece, Nikos Kourimenos, uh, who is with us this afternoon, would like uh, to address, uh, I mean, a, a question or reflection from his part. Nikos. Yes, good evening. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, this evening and uh, participated in in this um, uh, uh, in this lecture. Uh, thank you very much, Father uh, Father Destivel, for your uh, ref uh, reflections. Um, uh, I have um, a more uh, um, uh, broader, I can say, question uh, since um, it is. Um, more or less um, generally accepted that uh, we already live in the in uh, in the age of digital uh, reality and i think that it is something that also the the synodical process itself itself has taken into into uh, account so my uh, my question is whether uh, digital reality can be seen uh, not only as a as a tool, uh, as a, as a mean that can facilitate the processes uh, with a broader participation, uh, etc., uh, but rather as uh, it can be seen also as an aspect that can influence uh, or transform the core of the synodical process, because it is uh, something that has. Um, uh, uh, we can say uh, consequences from an anthropological uh, perspective. So if uh, this uh, uh, new uh, digital uh, human being uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this direction can also uh, has an influence in, uh, in the synodical uh, uh, reality, in the synodical process. Thank you. Uh, I would like your, your comment if you have any on you know, this aspect. Thank you, Professor Kuremenos. Uh, yes, it is a very, it's a, a very important question. Actually, uh, I should uh, have said that uh, in parallel to the to the seven continental <clears throat> assemblies, there was also a digital assembly, uh, mm -hmm. which was part also of the synodal consultation, and. Uh, uh, of course, the, the digitalization uh, facilitates somehow the synodality in the sense that uh, 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 more co people can be involved in the consultation process. Uh, can be, but uh, on the other side, of course, it also raises new questions because uh, digitalization also uh, promote a new form of fellowship. Mm -hmm. uh, a new form of fellowship and it and perhaps even a new form of communion. Uh, but what does that mean from an ecclesiological point of view? And we see all the also the, the, the risk and even the, the danger of, of such uh, understanding of communion where people after COVID uh, were uh, stayed home and were looking at the Holy Eucharist from uh, their uh, from their room from the house yes instead of participating in presence so from of course from 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 one hand it is uh, di the digitalization facilitates synodality on the other hand uh, it 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 may also be uh, uh, an obstacle to a true synodality but in any case i think it should be reflected upon uh, uh, what means the digital fellowship? What does that mean from an ecclesiological point of view? And it is, we have uh, tried to reflect on this subject uh, in the Dicastery for Promoting Christian Unity with an inquiry to all Episcopal conferences regarding the impact of the pandemic. Uh, 
so, but it was also uh, the question of the, of, of the digital tools, impact of the pandemic on the ecumenical relations. And the response were very paradoxical because in, in fact, uh, of course, uh, from one hand, uh, the pandemic uh, was an obstacle to the relation. On the other side, there were new form of fellowship, as I said, but is that fellowship what we are looking for in the ecumenical movement? It is, it is a question. But in any case, a whole chapter of the, one of the 20th chapter uh, of, the, in, uh, of the synthesis report was dedicated to this question. And mm. I think it, it is also an ecumenical question. We could, it could be very interesting to have a common reflection between Catholic and Orthodox on, on, this, on this issue. Mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you, Nikos, for your question. And uh, actually, this this meeting is an online meeting, so where we have a reflection, ex exchange of views. So it is in the service of our fellowship. So uh, Professor Baraktaris asked the, the uh, yes, uh, I would like to address a last uh, question. Yes, Agustinos. Yes, thank you, Dimitri. Uh, just a short comment uh, to what you. Father Destivel said uh, before that just that uh, my perception is that a, a church without synodality risks losing its unity. But at the same time, a church without primacy, the many risk to lose their one voice. So as you correctly pointed out before, we must uh, consider uh, in a uh, in uh, two ways, this collaboration, let's say, this um, combination of the two ecclesiological perspectives, primacy along with synodality and synodality along with primacy. We cannot um, um, have a, a proper, let's say, governing of the governing model of the church without these two perspectives of synodality and of primacy and vice versa. So that was my my first uh, uh, comment. My second uh, would be that all, um, as you said correctly, uh, the the Catholic Church had um, has received, let's say, some kind of um, influence and uh, reflection of the work done within the World Council of Churches, which uh, worked on the theme of synodality during the eighties. And uh, later uh, on uh, the first uh, years of 90s, influenced by the synodality within the uh, uh, or within the tradition of the Orthodox Church. Uh, just a question is that uh, which I would like to, to to pose is that in history we see that uh, those who had the right, let's say, uh, and the authority to participate in the official works of the synodal, of a synod, were those bishops who embraced or accepted the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed. So uh, that was the, the ultimate, let's say, criteria of those who were the uh, uh, officially granted to participate in the works of a synod. So... Uh, do you have in the Roman Catholic Church uh, some kind of criteria um, in order to 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 um, send this kind of invitations to other Christian churches to participate in the works of of this um, uh, of this synod the process that you are working uh, in the Catholic Church? For yes. instance, as you said, as you said, is the baptism, which was pointed out uh, nearly in the and the uh, is ready decratio. Eh? But also, is there any other kind of criteria that you you have uh, as a Catholic mm -hmm. Church? Yes, this this last year, and it will be the same this year because it will be the same the same fraternal delegates will participate. So the 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 criteria was uh, so. But by family, so we distinguished four families, uh, Eastern Orthodox, Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, mainline Protestant churches, and three churches, and three from each, so there were 12 as a whole. But uh, uh, 
of course, all this, uh, the, the, these, um, um, these invitations are extended to uh, uh, communions with whom we have already a dialogue. Yes. So we have about, I think, 16 dialogue now. Uh, uh, so it, it is a criteria, I would say. Uh, it, is, it is another criteria that... that uh, Christians who are willing to engage in dialogue with us, because otherwise it would make no sense. Uh, but uh, uh, the synodality is is an important to to to, to already uh, experience the communion we we have between us, uh, and and I would say that the fraternal delegates they. Uh, I think they they uh, felt that they were like the other, and there were no the, they were among the other in the same uh, round tables, and there was no distinction. So I think it was an, an important uh, uh, so it was an important fruit of the synod also for also for the bishops. The bishops, as I mentioned, they. Oh, it's not a council. Yes, we make this distinction in, in the Catholic between council with all bishops. So there are, I think, now about 2,500 bishops, more or less, uh, diocesan bishops. Yes, not speaking about emeritus and titular bishops, uh, which are about five as a whole. Yes, there are five. So it's not possible to gather all the bishops. So uh, the, the, the rule was that uh, uh, there were one bishop for 25 uh, for 25 bishops. Uh, so as a whole, as I said, there were uh, 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 350 bishops more or less uh, present at the... So this is uh, this is a criteria within the Catholic Church. And the, of course, as you, as I uh, mentioned in one of the proposal of the Synodal Assembly that was that there will be more fraternal delegates at the next session. So we will see how many, I don't think that there will be <laughs> much more than 12. It was already a lot, but uh, nevertheless, I think it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, um, um, uh, and a proposal uh, adopted by a, a large majority of, of the of the synodal assembly. So I think it's a good sign that ecumenism, as said Pope Francis many times, there is no synodality without ecumenism and no ecumenism without synodality. So it is really what we have experienced during this uh, uh, synodal assembly. And I think it will be one of the fruit also of this synod. So thank you. Thank you, Professor um, Barak Taris, for the question, and uh, Professor Desiree, for your answer. I think we, we can close this session here. Uh, I can uh, but share two very brief uh, concluding uh, reflections. Uh, in um, 2013, Pope Francis in Evangelii Gaudium in number 246 of uh, the text wrote about the need for the Catholic Church to learn from the synodal experience among the Orthodox and the practice of synodality among the Orthodox. I would say that we too Orthodox need to learn from Catholics because the presentation you made to us uh, this afternoon was quite impressive what the whole me mechanism was um, set up to support a synodal process that will be concluded in uh, in October. So you had three, four years of full synodal process of the whole church. So this is something that perhaps we Orthodox can learn from. Uh, the second uh, remark is that usually or historically, uh, the Orthodox underline their synodal identity to reply to some extremes of the papal authority, but that was often a negative way to understand the synodality. We need now to proceed to a positive, a creatively way to re-understand a synodality that could uh, definitely make use of the reception of the gifts from other churches. So what you are doing in the Catholic Church should be received by the Orthodox uh, Church in, uh, in light of what you have described as a Synodality and ecumenism. Synodal Church is 
also in ecumenical church and vice versa. So this exchange of experiences of practices is very important for the for the church. Officially, this has been accepted in the Ravenna documents that you have uh, and Kate in Alexander documents that you have uh, quoted uh, before. So uh, our center will continue moving uh, towards this direction of bringing the fruits of your work in our Orthodox um, audience, both in Greek and, uh, and, and and in English. As I said at the beginning, we will offer the text, a summary of your text in Greek for our friends and uh, colleagues. And I hope, I'm sure we can continue our reflection in the future, uh, if not before, the 2024 October session, after the October session with the results of, of it. So once again, thank you very much, Professor De Stivel and our colleagues, uh, Augustinos, Nikos, for their comments, questions, and uh, see you uh, in a few weeks from now with our next online uh, conference. So good evening.